Nilipuka hele leo kapo ni poni hikina Na iya na ilu na oke kukulu okala nila the wind, the light, the clouds, the currents, the taste, the smells, those are all what you belong to. That's what indigeneity is in, in my mind. The place comes first. And the only ownership that you have is its stewardship. Hawaii is like the melting pot of cultures. It usually brings people together that love the oceans. And so that's what makes Hawaii so special. It's a, a diverse culture and uh, it's rooted in a Hawaiian tradition that really respects the land and the oceans. If the oceans are not healthy, we're not healthy. If the oceans die, we die. So it's this side of just the survival of humanity. is that collaborative glue that looks at the organizations that are doing really good work and we bring them together. We provide knowledge from our collaborators around the world, from scientists, from material specialists, and uh, other activists doing work similar so that we can further empower their work. As a scientist, uh, of course, I want to answer scientific questions and I want to help within the scientific community making new discoveries and just advancing science. Uh, but as a citizen, I think it's really my role to protect the ocean. And I want to do more than just science. I want to bring my science outside of the scientific community. I want to share, bring awareness and help solving this global problem of plastic pollution worldwide. Based on our research, plastic pollution and climate change, they are not two separate issues. They are very closely related. If plastic gets exposed to UV light, then it will produce greenhouse gases such as methane, and methane, for example, contribute to climate change. The logical thing to do is basically to use as little plastic as we can. I completely agree with repurposing plastic because it already took so much energy to make it. So if it's already out there, it's already produced, it's been in the environment, it's been removed, then it's worth giving it a second life. Recycling plastics is a very challenging thing to do. And we've learned over the past decade that trying to recycle plastic that's washing up on the beach is extremely difficult. But what it does is it creates these tiny little symbols of change to remind us about our consumer behaviors. And that's the power of upcycling plastic pollution. It's definitely not a solution, but it's a great educational tool. At the beach cleanup in Kahuku, there were so many microplastics, it was crazy. We cleaned up so much and literally all we had was like more. If all we do is these beach cleanups, that's all we're ever gonna do. We need to find a way to stop it at the source. So we just found this. This is a typical piece of plastic. We can clearly see that the wildlife, they are confused. They don't know what's the difference between a piece of food and plastic. We need to stop single-use plastic. But we cannot replace single-use plastic items by other single-use items. We need to use items that we can use for a lifetime. There are a lot of groups doing cleanups here, so our focus is on remote cleanups. These are areas where humans rarely visit, yet they're inundated by plastic pollution as a result of society's insatiable hunger for cheap seafood and our overuse of plastics in general. And all these lessons that we learn in Hawaii and globally for that matter are brought together for us to educate the public at our Parlay Air Station. The Air Station Hawaii is our huge model that we want to replicate around the world. We're combining different types of educational elements there. We have our upcycling station, we have different types of sessions, workshops, hands-on experiences. So it's really providing that educational space for people to want to have that in their own communities. And hopefully we can bring air stations to many communities around the world. Right now, 
how the coral reefs uh, across the world are highly threatened. Uh, a lot of it is a result of anthropogenic causes, man-made impacts, and one of the first organisms to suffer the consequences of human impact are the coral reefs, which is unfortunate because the coral reefs are what we call keystone species on the planet, which support a tremendous amount of life. Without these organisms, uh, many other organisms will fail to exist. Coral has been a part of my people's history for thousands of years. We believe that our oldest ancestor is this coral polyp. Going out there today and seeing the fishing line entangled on the reef and just the current state of the reef, it's, it's heartbreaking to have to accept that. Within the next hundred years, there's a potential that the coral will be erased from our history. The mapping of these coral reef systems are to not wait until the corals are lost before we have a record of what they look like and how they existed because that's our family in a way and we wouldn't want to just have to base it on imagination hopefully we can provide a bit of imagery to celebrate their beauty through science I lost my leg when I was 18 to a tiger shark surfing at home. Um, it wasn't painful, it was just, it happened really fast. It was kind of actually very unlike the movies. I, I knew a lot of, after that what sharks were doing to humans. I had no idea what we were doing to sharks and it wasn't until I watched a documentary about shark finning that changed my life forever. My best friend is like, like horrified of sharks. <laughs> So I took out Sage, she's from Molokai. She's a young girl and she's always wanted to dive with sharks. She is part of Parlay's Ocean Uprise Youth Initiative. Meeting Mike Coots was such an amazing experience. He taught me so much about sharks and he really taught me not to be afraid. Perfect. <laughs> I'd say the best way of switching the narrative is by education, is by understanding that we need sharks in our oceans. Sharks play a really unique part of the marine ecosystem. In fact, they play one of the most important parts. They are an apex predator and more importantly, they're a keystone species. They disproportionately affect the health and the well-being of the ocean by getting rid of the sick, the dying, the disease, and the weak. Sharks have killed less than 10 humans a year. In turn, we kill over 100 million sharks a year. There's that saying that if the oceans die, we die. Well, if the sharks die, the oceans die, and we will die. He is so calm and he loves the sharks that it really rubbed off on me to love the sharks and be with them and see them as really cool creatures. If you were to ask a 16 year old like me how to help the oceans, and I would say to be aware of where you are, be aware of the oceans, be aware of your surroundings, and make sure you are aware of what you are doing. So Cliff told me a saying once, and it goes, Ho kahi kailao likeana, which means to paddle the water together. And that's what we're doing here in Hawaii, but that's what we need to do around the world. So moving forward, the true solutions are proactive solutions that are centered around focusing on the problem at the source and stopping it from ever happening in the first place. And the way we're gonna do that is not only by looking to our leaders, but then also looking to our community and especially our youth.